So I've been talking about this trading stuff, as I just said, for, for a while in these shows. And I've been really cognizant of what I'm doing and, and how I can share things and how to be more and more transparent. And I'm trying to throw out as many trades as possible in the Facebook group. And I'm also taking, obviously, the trades in the service. And I've been showing more and more of those actual trades in these things. So. Again, this all boils down to when I meet someone, they ask me what I do, and I'm like, well, I'm a trader, and I also have an educational business. And usually they'll they'll take that at face value. And then when they see me in shorts and a t-shirt and barefoot or whatever, or compression socks, <laughs> they'll be like, what exactly do you do? And, and I'll say, well, I just buy stuff that goes up and sell things that go down. And sometimes you could do just that. And we'll get to that in one second. Anyway, this is kind of what I was going to, what I thought would be a great kind of nutshell type of stock. Big Blue Air was pointing high. It had about a 40% or so run. That's a decent run. And then the stock pulls back. And that's pretty much, if you look at like my little nutshell screen, that's pretty much the methodology in a nutshell. Most of the methodology, at least, is trading pullbacks. And I'm going to flesh out some of those more specific patterns in a few minutes. So this was the stock of the trading service, ADALIT, and the entry was 1085, stop 940, because sometimes we are wrong, and then initial profit target of 1230. So let's take a look at that. Entry is here, stop is down here, initial profit target is up here, right around or right above the old highs. Now let's take a look at what happened. It took a few days, but it eventually triggered and it did hit that initial profit target. And by the way, this is a good little quick lesson here. This is actually closer than this line might show, but it actually came for two days. It came within spitting distance of the initial profit target. And it's okay to apply a little bit of discretion, especially if that happens super fast. And I'm going to show you one that happened not all the way to the profit target, but ran up significantly in the first 15 minutes of trading, or like in five or 10 minutes, actually. Anyway, you can see it did rally nicely since, and it's kind of backed off a little bit. I think it was a tiny bit higher by the end of the day today, but so far, so good. We're free rolling, so to speak, on this position with the hopes. I know you said hope, but hopefully we'll be with it for a long, long time. And if in post, I'll put in a portfolio, and the open portfolio, and uh, show you where we are longer term with some of these positions that triggered way back last summer. So that's pretty much exactly what I do. I'm looking for pullbacks for the most part, okay? And I'm looking for a place to get on them, I'm looking for a spot where the position would be a failure. Not that I want it to fail, but you have to realize that sometimes positions fail, right? And initial profit target, just in case I'm right small and it comes right back in, at least I get something off. And if I'm trading on a 100K account, I would have, in this particular case, I'd have 1379 shares, but I'd round that up. And I'm pretty sure I did 14 in one account. I did a little bit more in some other accounts. But I try to keep as true to form, at least in one account with this. So when I look at that account, and even if I have shares elsewhere, I'll throw a few hundred shares in this account to make sure I'm following the service. And believe me, having a service, by the way, makes my life a lot easier as far as following the trades. On the trades I do outside the service, there's a little bit more question because I, I, I'm not as good of a planner as I am when I'm being forced to make a plan. 